very excited about this, uh, this EO style TED talk that we're about to have. So basically what this is, is we've brought three people uh, that are local chapter members that are going to provide some nuggets of value and really just, yeah, just provide as much value as they can. We found that there's a, many of our EO members actually have a, a, a significant amount of knowledge in their area of expertise. So we wanted to bring them to you uh, and we're doing this at this event. So I'm very excited. Uh, our very first speaker is somebody that probably most of you know, uh, maybe by his beard or his beautiful head. And his name is Fletcher. Fletcher Wimbush is a top, he, he's considered an expert in his space around the topic of hiring. Hiring and utilizing a framework of personality profiling, skill-based profiling to make effective hires. For many people, that is a challenging, uh, that's a, it's a challenging job really getting, you know, consistently hiring A players. And so Fletcher's going to share uh, some knowledge on this. Uh, come on up, brother. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah. Give him a hand, Skyler, guys. Thanks for having me. Man. Yeah. So, yeah, Skyler was one of my mentors uh, when I was going through the accelerator program, and so was Mr. Russ here. So uh, I owe a lot to both of them. And uh, I love the concept of, like, systemizing your business. Uh, I essentially had a lifelong journey to systemize hiring. Um, I was uh, – uh, my, my father was a management consultant. And he spent a lot of his time as a management consultant teaching people how to get the right people on the bus, hiring, right? Uh, how to evaluate people in that process and how to determine who's going to be great. He created a series of uh, behavioral skill and aptitude-based assessments that I felt was remarkable and many of our thousand-plus clients think are remarkable. Um, and I fell in love with that. Uh, even as a teenager, so I'd been in leadership roles through all my activities. I was student body president, I was captain of my football team. I naturally fell into these leadership roles, and, and mostly I was. get the right people on the bus, build an amazing team, everything else will follow, right? So this lifelong journey uh, took me through an entrepreneurial career, took me through a career with a large family-owned company with over 2,000 employees, 100 business units. And in that career, I took over the worst performing business unit out of 100. Uh, it was failing in all areas, had never been profitable in 30 years and we made it profitable. And we made it a top performing business unit with all, all um, across almost all metrics. Uh, that earned me promotions and accolades. And it wasn't my ability to be a good leader because I'm still a really crappy leader and still aspiring to be better at it. It was really the focus on building amazing teams. Uh, they did a lot of great things that are related to what I've now you know, put together as a fact-driven hiring system. Uh, it's focused on the four key pillars of getting hiring right, essentially. Uh, and I didn't really, didn't really understand exactly everything I was doing back then. Uh, uh, I had this successful career. I built this successful team. We were achieving great results. Thousands of people were looking at what we were doing and trying to duplicate it. And, you know, I sort of knew what I was doing. Uh, then 2012 occurred. Uh, my father got sick. He had a rare autoimmune disease called Wagner's granulosis. And over the course of nine months, he deteriorated. And on March 13th of 2013, he passed. Uh, father was probably one of the most influential people in my life. life. Uh, it happened relatively quickly. Nine months sounds like a long time, but you know when you're fighting to survive, you know it, uh, uh, you know uh, it goes really fast, right? Um, so I had a choice to continue my successful career or to take on his legacy, which were these uh, hiring assessments. 
which I was very, pretty familiar with. I'd used them. They'd helped me in my success. Um, and I didn't know what the hell I was doing. <laughs> but, you know, I was a fledgling entrepreneur. There wasn't much revenue in this business at the time. I was doing under 100000 a year. I took a substantial pay cut to take on this challenge. And I started finding myself having to deal with people who were using this product or interested in using this product and learning about their hiring processes. Asking them questions like, well, how many candidates do you have and where did you find them? Or uh, what's, what do you expect from these people in, in their job? Or what does your ideal candidate look like, right? And I'm beginning to ask them these <coughs> questions and very quickly I came to understand that we don't, many people don't have a clue. We don't know, we, we think we know what an ideal candidate looks like, but that's kind of a guess. We don't have measurable expectations of the people that we're trying to hire. Or those expectations aren't aligned with our core values or the mission of our company, right? Uh, you, you know, uh, many of us struggle with this. Um, and so I realized I had to do more than just provide people a tool. The tool is just one component of a very <coughs> complex system that needs to be executed in this almost perfect harmony in order to create the end result of an A hire, an A player, right? Uh, I'd studied many of the great uh, thinkers in the hiring space, my father, uh, the top grading guys, the smart people, I love their stuff. Uh, Lou Adler, hiring with your head. Mark Murphy, hiring for attitude. Uh, and his, his institute there and many others so I spent a lot of time studying these things, and now I'm starting to get to put all these things into action, right? So I get to regurgitate uh, some of these things that I've learned in helping, them, helping people through that journey of where do I begin my hiring process? How do I attract the right kinds of people? How do I uh, assess my candidates? And how do I train and onboard them? And I'm going to begin to practice what I, what I was preaching or what I've learned. Uh, and, and some of the things that I'd executed that I didn't even know I was doing or not doing right, right? And through that journey, essentially we created uh, the fact-based hiring system, right? Uh, so I'm, I'm coaching these clients, I'm teaching them, I'm beginning to try to give them and regurgitate these nuggets of, of hiring practices. But, you know, I'm still all over the place, it's just like I am now, right? <laughs> I had to kind of begin to hone it in and get it into this, like, more of a systematic approach, right? Um, I, I uh, began getting clients asking me to do search work for them, right? So they said, hey, I love what you're teaching me, I love the tools you're providing, but why don't you do the hire for me? Why don't you go out and find the person, help me assess them, and set, set them up for success? And I said, well, sure. So, so I ended up with a pile of res resumes and a bunch of chaos, right? Um, and I also saw an opportunity to to master what I've always been passionate about. And that led me on a journey to over 10,000 interviews. Because I really, really wanted to not only have studied this and learned it and share it with other people, but I wanted to be able to say to everybody else that I'm actually practicing and have practiced what I'm talking about. Because that's the only way to learn, right? We gotta practice, we gotta fail to learn, right? Um, so the fact-based hi driven hiring system we came up with was you've got to have a framework. So it's your foundation. Uh, then from there, we can begin to work on attracting talent. And then we can move into the candidate evaluation phase. And the last phase is training and onboarding. If we fail or do a mediocre job in one of these four areas, then we are inevitably setting ourselves up for failure and not only ourselves, but the person that we hire. So it's a great kind of simple way to think about the four major pillars of what we got to do in the process. Now, unfortunately, there's like five to 10 subtopics to each one of these things to do them right. But at least it's a beginning, right? We can sit here and say, okay, how do I master you know, creating the right framework? How do I master attracting people? How do I master candidate evaluation? How do I master training and onboarding people successfully, right? So we can begin to chunk the challenge down into something that's hopefully a little bit more manageable, right? Just like we do with everything else in our business, right? 
You know, we have lots of huge challenges in, you know, where do we begin to eat the elephant, right? You know, one, one bite at a time. So, so the piece where I see people and clients and even if you experience myself, trust me, I've had plenty of hiring failures. In order to be good at hiring, I have to fuck it up plenty of times too, right? So, uh, but is really in the, the fundamentals, the framework, right? Um, we've got to lay the groundwork to be better prepared to actually engage in that hiring process. And that starts by doing some dirty work. So I, I like to think about this. I mean, there's a lot of EOS scaling up. There's a lot of business coaching. Vincent's going to talk a lot about how he's mashed these programs together, and I think it's great. In order to have a successful strategy, we've got to do these things. We've got to stop, slow down, take the time to analyze. What is that person's role going to be? What are the measurable expectations? From there, we can actually create a job description that's in alignment with our strategy and our goals and our execution goals, and that is measurable. Again, based on facts, something that's measurable. Now we can actually begin to formulate who is it that we're actually looking for. I had an interesting conversation with a guy today. He was a failed uh, uh, CEO for a nonprofit. He was there eight months, and he was telling me that the reason why it failed is because the owners and him, their, their visions weren't in alignment. They wanted an executor. He wanted to be a visionary. Well, if we would have gone through this exercise, we would have realized that in this case, that this guy is a visionary, not an executor, and wasn't the right fit for the role. And we would have had a, a better profile to go out and, and target the right person. All of this accumulates into what we would call a candidate scorecard. So once we know who we're looking for, because we've done the work to analyze the job, create clear and measurable expectations, then we can actually create a scorecard to evaluate the talent that's coming through our pipeline. That gives us the clarity that we need in order to make a decisive decision that will hopefully result in that you know, ideal, ideal candidate. So job analysis, again, is where we fail a lot of times. We need to you know, really look at the job and make sure that we're, we're creating kind of smart goals around the OKRs or the KPIs, the measurable expectations. And again, we need to turn this into some sort of scorecard so that when we're going through this process, we have clear vision on who we're looking for. Uh, as a side note, I'll throw in there, you know, an applicant tracking system is a great way to manage the process. I was just talking to Rick about this. So um, it's like a CRM for hiring, right? So when you have this huge task, it kind of makes it a little easier. But really, let's move on, we'll move on to the next phase here. So now we've done the groundwork. We've created the framework. We have a clear vision of who we're looking for and what we expect from them. Now we can go out into the world and begin to figure out how to attract those people. And it makes it a lot easier to figure this out because we know exactly who we're looking for now, right? Again, a lot of times we get lost. We don't really know who we're looking for. We go out and hire a salesperson, but we haven't really clearly defined the measurable outcomes of, or how they're gonna do the job or what is really involved in that particular sales job. And we find ourselves attracting the wrong kinds of people. Maybe we're finding People who are great at inbound sales and not great at outbound sales, or vice versa, right? You know, uh, the other big piece of attracting talent that we often, as entrepreneurs, and I have this conversation with people all the time, is there's no good people out there. All the people that uh, you know apply are garbage or no good. Um, you know, this. Uh, you know, what's wrong with these people? Or you know, the employees are you know don't care about my business the way I care about my business. Things like that. We're all, many times those conversations are had from, the, from our perspective. We're talking about what I want. I want somebody who's great. I want somebody who can do this. I want somebody who needs to be able to do that. But what do you think they want? They don't fucking care. They care about themselves, right? So we need to flip our mindset. What, do, what about our customers? Do we go to our customers and say, you need to do this, you need to do that, you need to be like this? No. We say, what's important to you, Mr. or Mrs. Customer? Right? And here's how I can help you solve that problem. 
So first thing we have to, the first mindset we learned that we had to begin changing our mindset on was we need to stop thinking about it from our own perspective and start thinking about it from their perspective, from our ideal candidate's perspective. What's in it for them? How does this opportunity help them grow in their lives, help them improve their quality of life? Because that's what we all want. It's human nature, right? We all just want to improve our quality of life, right? And that is different for all of us. So the first thing I learned there is we had to change that switch. That's probably one of the biggest takeaways I can offer, because then it affects all of these things. We can talk about different strategies, and I'll leave you with a few of them, but you know, first and foremost, I've got to you know, make my advertisements findable. Uh, that's the big net whittling down to find the one you know, gem, right, approach. Your number one strategy for finding the ideal talent, the people who are most likely going to align with your company's values, mission, and vision is gonna be referrals. Number one thing that you can do. Uh, easier said than done, but it's not that hard. It just takes a little <coughs> bit of effort just to stay focused on it. If you are gonna use a, a wide net, you gotta use the job boards effectively. Uh, just don't bother using anything else other than Indeed and ZipRecruiter, uh, unless you have some su super specialized job. Uh, most cases, those would be all you're ever gonna need. Uh, better yet, if you really wanna put some time and energy into this, is be your own headhunter. It's not that difficult to do. Well, this day and age with LinkedIn, uh, any A player uh, that I reach out to and say, hey, I'm the CEO of the higher talent and I'm looking for a director of marketing, I'm looking for a director of marketing, and I, and I say, hey, your background looks really amazing and you look like you could be, you know, this could be a really interesting opportunity for you, is gonna get 10 times, a, a 10 times better response than hiring, than having some admin or some third party recruiter, no offense, Rick, <laughs> go out and do that for you, right? You know, anybody's gonna be, uh, uh, who gets touched by the boss and, and solicited by that person and complimented by them is gonna be 10 times more receptive to engaging in a conversation, right? So that's the, the way we can uh, hyper pinpoint our ideal person is by being our own headhunter, if we've gotta go down that strategy. And you can hire a headhunter. Um, my only piece of advice here is hire one that, you know, is, that, that is gonna partner with you and is gonna align with your values and is know something about your world that you're in, and be careful with staffing agencies. Uh, they can be good, but they can be treacherous. Um, I, I'm generally strongly averse to hiring people on a temp or contract basis. Uh, I don't think too many people out there say, hey, I want a temporary job, right? <laughs> um, in some cases, it can be applicable, but I would watch out for using staffing agencies when you're trying to hire a long-term fit for your organization. And uh, another kind of full, cool strategy, if you are in a highly sp specialized world, uh, maybe engineering is a great example of this. So I've got a civil engineering client. They're in <coughs> Southern California. They're large. There's only so many civil engineers in Southern California. How are you gonna cultivate a group of, of great potential new hires? Well, create a mastermind, invite the top civil engineers to come sit down and have breakfast with your top civil engineers every uh, month. And you guys could talk about civil engineering stuff, but you're also building a relationship. You're planting the seeds, right, for future hires. So these are kind of your main strategies that you can use to begin to attract talent. Now they're each, and again, they each have their own application. They're great for different types of situations. And so you, we want to use them appropriately. Um, skip that. And that. Just a few facts on referrals, but I mean, the, the, the studies are never ending on how powerful employee referrals are. So huge, huge uh, numbers on the satisfaction of those hires and the quality of those hires. So, so once we built a pool of talent, 
right? We've gone out and we've attracted people using one or many of these methods that we've talked about. Now I can begin to think about how I'm going to assess these people, right? And for the purposes of this conversation, uh, I spent, I, I entered my career in, in, or this business as a pretty good assessor of talent. <clears throat> but I had to learn to get a whole lot better at it. So we've placed over 300 candidates in all sorts of jobs, and we have over 1,000 clients who've made over 5,000 hires using our hiring tools. So I had to get really good at this part, right? Um, a simple system for hiring is obviously we review re resumes, but we uh, first interview, we focus on engage and evaluate then we move into assessments. Obviously, I'm an advocate of using different types of assessments, but we want to choose the right assessment for the, for the job. They're not all created equal, and they're not all applicable. So we want to choose the right tool for the situation. And then we get into our career history interviewing, coming from top grading. It's a very, very powerful way to learn a lot about somebody in a relatively short period of time. And one absolute step which I often see uh, get skipped over is the reference check. So we learn from top grading, TORP. Many of you guys are probably familiar with it, but it's a, a critical step. It's part of the interview process, but it also needs to be executed on the back end where we actually have to speak to the previous supervisors. There's only one reference that I accept, the previous supervisor. Why? Because they are the chief consumer of that person's work product, period. If that person doesn't have anything nice to say about that individual, there's a red flag, period. If the last four supervisors don't have anything nice to say about that person, you better run for the hills, right? Vice versa, you know, you're going to learn a lot if they all have nice things to say. And you can really dig into it. And another step that often gets overlooked is uh, working interviews. So depending on the role, that might look like a work sample, a sample project. It might be just a flat out full day of work or the first day of training. So working interviews can be conducted in lots of different ways, but they're absolutely critical. So I'm hiring a director of marketing. Before I give this person a full-time job, they're gonna spend a, I'm gonna spend a week working with that person on our marketing strategy. I'm gonna pay them their full rate, but we're gonna spend a week collaborating together to figure out whether we, we can work well together. Because I'm a fucking asshole, and I'm not easy to work with, and you know maybe they won't want to deal with me. Or maybe I'll find out they don't know their stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna hire a key executive in my business. That's gonna be a full week of work. Now, you know, I'm going to hire an admin. It's going to be like, you know, a, a day in the office, and I'm going to teach them some tasks and things, and then I'm going to have them do those tasks and observe how they do it, and I'm going to pay them for the work that they did that day. And, you know, if it goes terribly wrong, then I'll thank them for their time and hand them a check, and they'll move off on, on their merry way. I mean, how many people have made a hire, and then the very first day that person shows up and you go, oh, God, what did I do? Right? <laughs> Good. <laughs> yeah, pay them. <laughs> That's a complex uh, situation. Generally, it's yeah, it's a it's a complex answer. Uh, no, it doesn't apply. It's a misinterpretation of how to apply the rules. So that's what it boils down to. But uh, I'm happy to chat with you about that afterwards because I could spend 10 minutes getting into the weeds on that one. Uh, go ahead. How much time do we have? Three minutes, two minutes? Okay, I got to wrap up. So last piece, happy to chat with you guys afterwards. But this is also another area, is a treacherous area, is the talent onboarding. Now, this is not the easiest part, and honestly, is not personally my strength. However, 
I've had some very recent success internally, and I've also witnessed other organizations who do this really, really, really well. You hire your A player, and if we do a terrible job of onboarding them, uh, it might not be them, it might be you, right? And so we do need to have a plan here, and it needs to fit into our system. And again, this is where the things that Vincent and Skylar are going to talk about really take off and really can help with some of this kind of stuff. But have it, the key ultimately is make it smart. Clear, measurable outcomes. And we want to break those down into micro uh, periods of time. The first week, second week, first month, second month, third month, sixth month, ninth month, twelfth month. Oh, and guess what? Third year, fifth year. That would be like your BHAG for your new hire, right? Many, many roles, especially key roles, big jobs like a director of marketing, I can't expect them to achieve the world for me in three months. Their role and their achievements are going to grow. And if they stay with me for three years, they'll begin to hockey stick if they're good, right? But how will I know that I've made the right hire unless we've really had a systematic way to measure success along the way? And that's where a really thorough training and high training and onboarding process, and that tends to be very unique for each role in the company and the company itself, and part of that too is indoctrination into that cultural values. So that's the last piece of the fact-based hiring system. Um, thank you for, for having me and uh, appreciate your time. <laughs>